Hello plant parents. Are you having a hard time managing your plants indoors? Whenever you end up buying a plant from a local garden center or nursery, they end up dying within 15 days to a month. If this is your problem, keep watching this episodes where I talk about five basic indoor gardening tips you should do to keep your plants healthy and green. Hi, I'm Anu Grover and welcome to the Freshly Break episodes on Gardening 101 where I talk about these five tips on making sure that you grow greener and healthier babies. But before I talk about these tips, you need to do one more thing. You've got to go down and subscribe to our channel, My Plant, My Baby and hit the bell button so you keep getting the updates so that you can grow greener and healthier babies. All right, let's talk about these five tips and these problems which every one of you guys go through. Plants are in nursery, 15 days, 20 days they do very good and slowly and gradually you see they end up dying. Or a lot of time you see that if you have kept your plant in the washroom, they sort of go saddled and eventually die down. So these are these five tips you should look at to make sure that your plants never die, especially the indoor plants. The first and the most important tip, which is the source. So whenever you're buying your plants, you need to make sure what is the source. Because if you don't know the source, it's like you're, you're adopting a kid and you don't know who the parents are, you know, how it's been bought up, what's its genes. So similarly for our baby kids here, you know, if you're buying your plants from a local garden centers where you don't know if they were kept outdoor or grown outdoors. If you bring them indoors, they end up dying. You know, so due to the temperature shock, they don't survive for long. These are the things you need to manage as a plant parent that whenever you're buying it from a local garden center, just always make sure that the source is good, which means wherever they have bought this form, it's from grown indoors and the plants look healthy. So if I look at this plant, you know, you should look at this plant, you should look that it's healthy. So, you know, look at, talk to the nursery guy that where is the source? If this plant was grown outdoors, it will not sustain well if you bring it in a low light levels. But if this is grown in a 2000 to 2500 lux into a polystructures, then it will do very good indoors. And this is why a lot of the plants die and feel that we don't have a green thumb. So the first thing, whenever you're buying, look at the source. The second important thing is, Less is more. Yes, less is always more when we talk about watering. Always make sure that your water, to your your indoor plants are not been overwatered. Uh, as per one of the researches we did, more than 80% of the plants which died had the reason of overwatering. So out of 10 plants, every eight plants were dying because people were putting more water to it, not less. And that's why. Less is more, which means that always make sure that you don't overwater the plants. Whenever we overwater it, which means that there is clotting happening at the root level, the roots doesn't feel good about and slowly and gradually start rotting. And once they start get rotting, you see the foliage also going down. So always make sure that you optimally water it. In case you want to know more about it, there is a lot of content which I have talked about in Anu Kinnuske or Gardening 101. And you can see all of those videos on the watering tips. The third basic tip which you have to look at is the fertilizers. Now, a lot of us feel that plant is coming, they hai, they should do good. right? Uh, but that's not true. It's just like with human body, we need to be energized by getting food every day. Same is with the plants. Right? They need food every day. And which means when they talk about food, they take nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, fibers from the media and carbon dioxide from the air to do the photosynthesis. But if they don't have this nitrogen at the base, they will not grow. And we as plant parents sometimes are not able to judge this, but you got to always make sure that you have not put over fertilizers, but also make sure that you are not under fertilizing your plants. That's why I always to have a six monthly slow releaser program, which is that you put these slow releasers every six months. That's why, and it gives optimum food to your plants. So that's the third tip you should look at. And the fourth tip is to choose your plant wisely. Now, a lot of people I've seen 
coming to us and saying, you know, I have my jade indoors and it's not doing good. Or I have got this bougainvillea looking very beautiful, Anu. But it's been 15 days and they're not doing good because it's been kept indoors. So we need to see that which are those plants which will survive the indoor light or the low light level and then put them accordingly. So for example, the eglunamas, the skindapsuses, the ZZs, these are all good, the palms are all good indoor uh, plants and they are made by God to grow into low lights also. Right? But plants like bougainvillas or plants like jade, they are not meant, they need more than 10,000 plus lux levels at most of the time. And they're not made by nature, by God to sustain in low lights. So whenever you are choosing your plant or want to buy some plant for indoors, look at the plant which will do very good indoors. Uh, we have given the list and we have made multiple videos on five to 10 indoor plants, must haves you must have, you must have at home. And you can check those videos uh, and uh, we can, and, and, and then choose your plants wisely around. So uh, that's the fourth tip from my side. The fifth and the last tip, which I think every plant parent should look at is the placement. And that defines a lot of things around how the plant will grow. So placements, it means where I should keep this plant. Should I keep it at the windowsill? Should I keep it in the washroom? Should I keep it on the center table? And everywhere you put it, uh, there are three things which defines that placement. One is the light, that how much light it's getting. Second is how much humidity it gets in because of that placement. And third is the temperature because of that. Now, all of these three places will have different sets of these parameters. If you put that outdoor, it will have a completely different set of parameters. For all indoor plants, it's important that they should get ideally 1000 to 2000 lux levels on a daily basis, at least three to four hours. They should not be given an extreme variance in temperatures, which means from 20 to 30 is a good variance which it should have, but they should not go towards five or 10 degrees and then again to 20, 25 degrees, or they should not go from 20, 25 degrees to 40, 45 degrees, which means that all indoor plants should have 30 to uh, 20 to 30 as a moderate temperature around it. And also you have to see that the humidities are maintained. Now, for example, in winters, the the weather is so dry and uh, the temperature drops to 15 and light goes below lux of 1000, which means a plant which should ideally get a 2000 lux is getting less than a 1000 lux. A humidity of let's say 60% and above, which is usually in all the weathers, goes down to 20%. A temperature which ideally should be 20 to 30 drops down to four to five degrees. And that's where your plant starts dying in winters. And this is something you've got to make sure that these placements are right because that defines a lot around these parameters. So as a basic tip, as a basic thumb rule, always make sure that your plants are at the window sills. In case you don't have window sills in areas where it gets some indirect lights of three to four hours. If you also not have that, or you want to put your plant in a washroom which doesn't get the light, choose your plant really carefully, find the right vendor source so that your plants are really strong and they're made for indoors. For example, Eglunema still can take a low light for a longer period of time. And you can keep juggling in, in terms of bringing it near some window sills where you get four, five hours of day sun sunlight and you can put it for maybe a few months and then take it back to the washrooms again. So these are basic five tips. And trust me, if you're able to manage all five of these basic tips, you will graduate from a amateur gardener towards becoming a pro gardener and these were my five tips for you to become that thank you for watching gardening 101 see you and have a nice day bye bye